Hi, I'm Anna and welcome back to my channel, Building a Business. So in my previous video, I went through how you can use the Bigger Pockets property calculator to determine whether a potential property will be worthwhile for you to purchase. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch it by clicking up here. However, as I mentioned in that previous video of mine, using the Bigger Pockets calculator is not free. In fact, it costs $39 per month with a pro membership. If you're interested in recreating the Bigger Pockets calculator for yourself for free, then follow along and keep watching this video. I'll be going through very detailed step-by-step -step process so that you can make your very own Bigger Pockets calculator from scratch. Okay, so I have two quick examples. Here on the right side, you can see the Bigger Pockets rental property calculator. And then here on the left is just my Excel document that I created that does the same thing that the Bigger Pockets calculator does. So I just, for example, one decided that it would be in St. Louis. Oops, I just realized I spelled it wrong. So let's fix that quickly. Okay, so if I scroll down, the purchase price, these numbers are all just made up, but the, I decided the purchase price would be 150000 and the closing cost would be 3000 You can see I entered that information on this side in my Excel document as well. I then scroll down to the loan details, and I decided I'd put 25% down with an interest rate of 3.5% and a loan length of 30 years. Again, you can see that same information here. If we scroll down further, rental income, I used the 1% rule to say that I would have a monthly income of $1,500 per month. You can see that there. In terms of other income, for this specific example, I decided there would not be any other income. And then I scroll down to the expenses. Property taxes, I said, would be $166 per month. Insurance, $66 per month. You can see I entered those there. Repairs and maintenance, 5%, vacancy, 5%, capital expenditures, 5%, and management fees, 10%. You can see all those values are equal there. And then I decided that the tenant would be paying all of these other costs. So for me, all of these costs that they have listed here would be zero. And zero for other. And then I press update analysis. Now it'll show me a few main numbers. So if I just scroll over here on my Excel, I did some calculations for the loan information, so I calculated the down payment, which is just the percent down times the purchase price. Then the loan amount is equal to 1 minus the percent down times the purchase price. The loan length, I converted it to months in order to make it easier to calculate the monthly mortgage payment, so I just took the loan length in years and multiplied that by months. And finally, for the mortgage payment, let me pull up the equation I used. So this is the equation to figure out what your monthly mortgage payment will be. And so for this equation, M is equal to the monthly mortgage payment that you'll be paying. P is equal to the starting loan amount. So that's not the purchase price of the home. That's the amount that your loan starts out as. Then your monthly interest rate. So remember, since this is monthly, you have to divide the interest rate you're given by 12 to get it into monthly interest rate and then your loan length in months. And so generally you would know what your loan length is in terms of years. For instance, a 15 year mortgage and a 30 year mortgage are very common. So for N, you would just need to multiply that by 12 to get it into months. And then you can use this equation to determine what your monthly mortgage payment would be. Now, if you're putting this equation into an Excel document, just be extra careful about the parentheses and the order of operations to make sure you're getting the correct value. So now let's go back to my Excel and the bigger pockets calculator. So in terms of the monthly cash flow, that is just equal to the income minus your expenses. So if you see here, this is the income that I've calculated, which in this case is just the monthly rent minus the expenses. You can see if you look over at what bigger pockets calculator has that they're giving you very similar values. The income is exactly the same, expenses are exactly the same, and they've just rounded differently on the monthly cash flow. Because if you notice, $1,500 minus $1,112 is equal to $388 per month, like I have, versus the $387 per month. So I'm thinking they're just rounding down in this case, but essentially it's the same value whether you use my Excel or Bigger Pockets calculator. So as I just mentioned, this value is just the income minus expenses. Now the income is the sum of the monthly rent plus the other income, which in this case is zero. So in this particular example, it's just the monthly rent. And then for your expenses, this is a 
slightly more complicated equation, but essentially you're just summing all your expenses. So this is per month, per month, you add those, you add all of these values that are per month, in this case they're zero. Then in terms of your vacancy, these are expressed as a percentage. So you sum the percentage, so this is 10 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, which equals 25%, and you're going to multiply that value by your income because this is this percentage is meaning what percentage of your income are you spending on these values. So that's what I've done there. And then I've also made sure to add my monthly mortgage payment as an expense because in this particular example, I have a monthly mortgage payment which is due every single month. And so that would definitely be considered one of my monthly expenses. Once I do that, you get the value, which you can see bigger pockets got the same value. Then in terms of the cash on cash return, that essentially means how much of the money that you originally put into the deal do you expect to get back by the end of the first year. So in this case, the amount of money I expect to make in the first year is how much money I expect to make per month times the number of months in one year, or 12. And then I'm going to divide that by the money I put into the deal. So the money I put into the deal is equal to the closing cost plus the down payment. That essentially is how much money I had to put in up front to get this property. So when you do that, you get 11.49%, which you can see the cash on cash return on investment is the same, 11.49% from the bigger pockets calculator. Now, if we scroll down a bit, this five year annualized return, that's a significantly more complicated number to calculate. So I will make a separate video where I calculate that. But in terms of the monthly mortgage payment, that number is the same that we have here, and I went over earlier how to calculate that one. These are all things that we've discussed earlier, so the rental income, the expenses, the total cash needed, again, that's just the closing costs, in this case $3,000, plus the down payment, which in this case was $37,500. So together that's $40,500, which you can see I've calculated the same amount there. Now, the Bigger Pockets calculator also calculates the NOI, which stands for the Net Operating Income, and they've calculated $10,716. Now, I also calculated that $10,716. And your Net Operating Income is essentially how much money you expect to make per year, not including the amount of money you spend on your mortgage payment. So to find this value, essentially, you just take your monthly cash flow and you add your mortgage payment because that's how much cash you would be making per month if you didn't have to pay for your mortgage. You then multiply that by 12 and you're left with $10,716, same as they've determined with the Bigger Pockets calculator. Now the cash on cash return we already calculated as 11.49% up there. And finally, the pro forma cap rate and the purchase cap rate. In this case, the pro forma and purchase cap rate are the same because we're assuming that we're not doing any repairs on the property, and therefore the purchase price of the property is equal to the after repair value of the property. If you're interested, please let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do an example where you do do repairs so that you can see the difference between the pro forma cap rate and the purchase cap rate. But for now, we're just gonna focus on the purchase cap rate and you find that value, which Bigger Pockets has calculated as 7.14%, by taking your net operating income and dividing that by the purchase price of the home. So in this case, the purchase cap rate of this property is 7.14%. Now, the last thing, which I don't have in my Excel because it's a very simplistic way of modeling and can be done just basically in your head, is the 50% rule of thumb. And what that rule of thumb says is that on average, your expenses per month will be approximately 50% of your total monthly income. Now this is a rule of thumb, so for your specific property, it may be very accurate, but it could also be totally off. So it's important to really look into the specifics instead of just assuming the 50% rule of thumb as you get closer to purchasing a property. But for this example, for the 50% rule of thumb, the total monthly income is the same $1,500 per month that we've discussed. You take 50% for expenses, and your monthly mortgage payment is the same as above. So you take your income, subtract $750, and subtract $505, and you're left with a cash flow per month of $244. Now this is an approximate value. In this particular instance, 
we actually think that we'll be getting closer to $387 per month based off of the numbers that we've determined for this particular property. And so while the 50% rule of thumb can be helpful to get a rough estimate, it's important to really dive into the numbers for your specific property. So now we've finished example property one. Let's take a quick look at example property two, which is a very similar example, but just it was slightly more complicated numbers. Once again, I've spelled it wrong, my mistake. So if I scroll down, purchase price, closing costs are gonna be the same. The loan details I've also put in as the same. And in terms of rental income, I've made it slightly more complicated in that in addition to rent, I'm gonna also assume there's a laundry service and that we get about $25 per month from tenants using that laundry service. So you can see in my Excel that in other income, in the last example, it was zero. And in this example, it's $25 per month. If I scroll down more, these expenses are all the same. And then what's different is that I'm assuming that I have to pay for water and sewer and garbage. So I've just made up some numbers, $30 and $15. I've added those into my expenses there. And I can go and say update analysis. And same as before, I won't go into the exact calculations, but you can see the income here is $1,525, and again, $1,525. Expenses, 1163 1163 Again, the monthly cash flow is off by $1 per month, and that's just a rounding error. And then cash on cash return, you can see is the same, 10.71, both places. We scroll down, the monthly mortgage payment again is the same. Cash needed is the same. Our NOI is slightly different than before, but again, it matches in the Excel and the Bigger Pockets calculator. And then your purchase cap rate has decreased slightly, and you can see that it matches the Bigger Pockets number with my Excel number. Now, as you can see, the Bigger Pockets calculator does have some more information, including what your property value, equity, loan balance, all of that will be throughout the lifetime of your loan. And additionally, you might have noticed that while entering the information, I could add more information about rehabbing the property, using points, taking into account potential income growth, and doing a more advanced expense breakdown. So if you have any interest in seeing how the numbers would work for those more detailed options, then please let me know in the comments below so that I can make a video for you on that. And lastly, I think making this Excel would be pretty easy and doable for anyone. But if you would like to just download this specific Excel that I created, then you can do so by clicking the link down in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned anything, please help me out by liking the video below and subscribing to my channel.